Today, I'm going to show you how to install Flume 2 and get it working with Home Assistant. First off, this thing is awesome. It's really easy to install. You can install within 10 minutes or even less. There's absolutely no plumbing required. There's no rewiring your plumbing. There's no need to solder anything. There's no need to cut the pipes or get this thing on. You basically have to strap this thing onto your water meter and that's it. One of its selling points is detecting water leak. Now, I know in other videos of mine, I show you how to detect water leak, but this thing is for detecting water leak whereby you cannot install the water leak sensors. Why is that? Well, I live in a bad neighborhood, and one time somebody turned on the spigot, the water hose in the garden, and left it running. I didn't know that until two days later, and my water bill for that month was at least $500. I called the water department up, and they didn't help. So if, for whatever reason, the water hose is running past two hours again like that, this flume machine, this flume sensor, will definitely alert me. Now, I was so excited to install this that I actually forget to take any photos whatsoever. So here we go, here are some Google images for you. Inside the box, you get this sensor that you strap onto the water meter. You get this little box that's plugged in to the wall. It uses a micro USB cable that you plug into the wall to get power. This will talk to your Wi-Fi network, and I believe it uses one of those ESP8266 chip. As of now, you rely on the cloud to get the water readings, but I'm hoping somebody, maybe one of you, is smart enough to hack this thing so that it works straight locally without any cloud whatsoever. We're going to integrate that cloud services with an API into Home Assistant later on, but for now, this thing cannot be worked totally locally, unfortunately. Here's the other unit that you'll be receiving in the package. This one is solely battery power, 3 volt battery packed. There's actually two slots for two batteries, but by default it comes with only one battery packed. If for whatever reason the battery is damaged or no longer working, like low voltage, then you have to buy another battery package. Or you can just hack it and wire it up with 3 volt DC power supply. I wish they made it simple as if, you know, popping in two AA batteries, but nope, no such option with this thing. There are also two straps, so yeah, you can strap this onto your water meter. So this is how I strap mine to the water meter. And this is the incorrect version, by the way, which is why my sensor was not working. Here you can see that the sensor is way too high past the water meter. It has to be on the same level as this meter right here on the black part. Also, this sensor has to be parallel with your pipe, or at least try to be as much parallel as possible to the pipe. So once I lower this thing by half an inch and rotate the sensor about 10-15 degrees to make it almost parallel to the pipe, then I started getting readings. It was really difficult for me to try to strap this thing onto the water meter because of this uh, other digital sensor provided by the company. But I did my best using the strap that was provided, as well as the uh, zip ties, as you can see here. Next up, you have to install this Flume app. Since this is my first time, I'm going to create a new login. Sign up here. Enter all of your credentials and create your own password. It's going to verify your account, so make sure that you give it the right phone number and not a fake phone number. Once you get the code, go ahead and submit it. Next up, it's going to ask for your location. Honestly, I think you can put fake addresses in here. I don't think it cares. Maybe it does matter because then you can file an insurance report if you have to. I don't know. This app is pretty easy to use. It'll walk you through all of the processes. So right now, don't install the water sensor yet. Just follow along. It'll ask you where is your water meter. So go ahead and click on continue. Right now, my water meter is down in the basement and not outside in the yard. Click on continue. Go ahead and open the lid up for it to take a photo of it. The app wants to verify that your water meter is compatible. It will ask you for all of the indoor appliances, how many people are living in the house. So of course I have the faucet, the toilet, the shower, the washing machine, the bathtub. Whatever you have in the house, now's the time to tell it. Outside there are the uh, sprinklers, and then click on continue. Go ahead and look at your Wi-Fi bridge. There's a code down at the bottom. Take a photo of it. So click on scan QR code. Next up, do the same thing for the water sensor. Go ahead and scan that QR code. Also down at the bottom. And now it's going to try to get the two devices talking to each other. 
So go ahead and plug in your bridge into the wall. Once you plug the bridge into the wall, it should start blinking blue. It wants to know the location, so go ahead and allow it. If for whatever reason it's not blinking blue, go ahead and power reset the whole thing. On the bottom, there's also a button and press and hold down that button for about 10 seconds for it to start blinking blue. Once it starts blinking blue, you should see a new Wi-Fi access point. It's called Flume Bridge Setup and click on that to join the network. And once the app knows that it's connected to, to that new access point, click on continue. Now we're going to tell the app how to join our own local network. For mine, it's TMVC. Go ahead and enter in your Wi-Fi credentials. Now that the bridge connects to your Wi-Fi network, it's going to try to connect it to the water sensor itself. For whatever reason, mine did not work and it took like 10 minutes for it to talk to each other. So hopefully you have a better experience than I did. If for whatever reason the sensor is not reading water usage at all, go ahead and go into the settings and go down to other troubleshooting and then recalibrate water sensor. Click on continue and here you're back to the basic again. So click on continue. Now go ahead and run the stream of water like a shower or a sink faucet on maximum level and then click on start. This wastes a lot of water by the way so maybe Wait for the next time you shower or someone to shower and then click on start. Click on continue once it's detected. And here you go. This is the first introduction to the dashboard that you'll see. On the app, every time you pull down from the uh, top, then you get another update. So here you can see that I just ran 0.42 gallons per minute. It is truly impressive how they updated in almost real time going from my house to their server and then back down into the app again. Now three days later, this is what you see. Here you can see the 24 hour averages. It's really bewildering how much gallons we use per day now that I'm monitoring it. Wow. If you want more detail, go ahead and open up the menu and go down to detail. Here it breaks down by the day, week, month and even year. So today, so far I use about 24 gallons. Yesterday, I used about 172 gallons. Massive. If you scroll down a little bit, you can see how it's broken down into categories. We shower a lot. Just for recap, there are six people in the house. Now let's get this thing into Home Assistant. So go ahead and go into Settings, Device and Services. Here you can see that it automatically found, detected the Flume 2. Go ahead and enter your username and password the one that you created when you first set up the account. To get the other two information, client ID and secrets, go ahead and go into your account on flumewater.com. Click on the menu and then go to settings. All the way down at the bottom, there's API access. Generate API clients. And there you go, it will give you the client ID and client secrets. Now that you have client ID and secrets, go ahead and jump back in, into Home Assistant and paste it back in and then click on Submit. You can assign the area if you want. Now it will show up as two devices, one of them being the sensor and one of them being the bridge. So go ahead and click on the first one. Click on the pencil icon to rename it to something that makes more sense. Click on Update. Rename. If you scroll down near the bottom, you'll see a binary sensor that says Leak Detected. Right now there's no leak, so that's why it's off. Let's create an automation to alert us when it thinks there's a leak detected. So on the left hand side, click on the plus icon to create an automation. Click on show 8 more. Flume sensor leak detected turn on. So for me, my action will be call service and send a notification to my mobile phone. I'm using Telegram, so it's notify.telegram. The message will be flume detected water leak and I click on save. Alright, hopefully this video helps you with this Flume 2 device and detecting water leak so that you'll save some money. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.